Welcome to Watch TV channel. This is Watch TV News. In today's bulletin, schools in Cape Coast Metropolis mark World Toilet Day. Ghana Education Service and UNICEF launch menstrual hygiene management communication materials. And Ghana Water Company introduces electronic billing. My name is Jessica Gezi. To the first story, water, sanitation and hygiene is critical to health and development. Globally, countries are challenged in providing adequate sanitation for their entire populations, leaving people at risk for wash-related diseases. According to the World Health Organization UNICEF 2017 Joint Monetary Program report, estimated 2.3 billion people still lacked basic sanitation services and 892 million still defecate in the gutters, behind bushes, at the beaches and open water bodies. Inadequate sanitation is estimated to cause 380,000 diarrheal death annually and is a major factor in several neglected tropical diseases, including intestinal worms and trachoma. This year, Beyond the Goalpost and Professional Network, PRONET, under the Football for Water project, joined the people of Cape Coast to mark the World Toilet Day. The day which was marked under the theme, Waste Water, brought together school children and teachers from selected basic schools in the Cape Coast Metropolis. Open defecation perpetuates vicious cycles of diseases and poverty and causes high levels of malnutrition and high number of deaths of children under five years. World Toilet Day is a United Nations annual international observance event marked every 19th October globally to raise awareness about the need for clean and safe toilets and to make sanitation a development priority for all. The executive director for Beyond the Goal Post, Miss Hilda Ada, spoke on the power of combining football skills with the provision of drinking water and building toilets in schools to make children better in school and the significance of the World Toilet Day. She said, the Football for Water project has provided wash facilities and developed football and hygiene skills of children in more than 300 schools. The project has also engaged football icons who volunteer as ambassadors to support the promotion of wash in schools and as role models. We, in our interventions, we are trying to solve the problem of open defecation by providing facilities for the schools that we work in. And we also try to promote the provision of um, household toilet from the school. So we encourage children to go back home and demand toilet facilities at home. Samira Suleiman, a professional soccer player with Black Queens in Ghana and the UMF Vikinga in Iceland, shared her experience as an ambassador for Beyond the Gold Post and the Football for Water project and appeal to Ghanaians to stop open defecation. We go to schools where I stand in as a role model. We use soccer, uh, football as we call in Ghana, to talk to the children, teach them personal hygiene, show them practical work about how to wash their hands, how to clean themselves so that they don't get sick. Basically, this is what I've been brought on board to use my image to help the children of Ghana. My message for the school children and all Ghanaians is that they should not defecate around because doing that costs a lot of sickness. It brings a lot of diseases. So they should stop doing that, especially those around coastal areas. They shouldn't defecate around. The Acton Regional Environmental Health Officer, Mr. Paul Nutuga, spoke on the team and the collaboration with other stakeholders to mark the World Toilet Day and advocated for making the sustainable development goal practical for everyone to play a role. He appealed to house owners to have household toilet facilities and cautioned that the law enforcement will soon catch up with them. I think the issue of public toilet ownership, or what we technically we call community toilets or communal toilets, is that the keeping of the sanitation infrastructure is not that good. As in, you go there, you see people doing uh, defecation around the toilet facility because of the nature and condition of what they have. Some will not be able to take care of it very well, and that in itself becomes a nuisance. 
I would also want to indicate that it is part of the Conventions of State Protocol that every house, every premise where human beings stay, at least for more than one, two hours, should have a toilet facility. And that we want to go and we want to enforce as part of our enforcement drives moving forward. So that a year from now, we will see a very high level of compliance because of the mobilization effort that we are going to put in place the security agencies, the chiefs and elders, opinion leaders in all the communities. We are bringing everybody on board towards the enforcement agenda. Because for us, we see everybody as a stakeholder when it comes to the enforcement process. And that we want to have done. And we are, we, are, we are cautioning or we are trying to tell the landlords in advance that we are coming after them. Because for a very long time, the issue has been behavior change communication, health education. And that we've done perfectly. So moving on. We are going to run a complementary activity of behavior change communication and then law enforcement. To other stories, the Ghana Education Service GES, in collaboration with UNICEF, has launched a menstrual hygiene management communication materials and website to educate pupils, especially girls, on menstrual hygiene. The communication materials and websites being disseminated to stakeholders as well as 32,000 basic and 1,000 second cycle schools in the country seeks to help keep the pupils and students abreast and also help build confidence level during their menstruation and help provide information on menstrual hygiene management to students and the general public. About 52% of the female population is of reproductive age and most of these women and girls will menstruate each month for between 3 and 7 days. Averagely, it is estimated that women menstruate 3,000 days over their lifetime. Menstruation is a natural part of the reproduction cycle. However, in most parts of the world, this natural occurrence remains taboo and is rarely talked about in society. As a result, the practical challenges of menstrual hygiene are made even more difficult by various sociocultural factors. The United Nations Children's Fund in 2014 selected Ghana among 14 other countries to participate in a research on advocacy and capacity building for menstrual hygiene management through water, sanitation and hygiene in schools. At the launch in Accra, Mrs. Margaret Okai the director of basic education division ges said menstrual hygiene management is an emerging global concern not only with regards to the menstrual period but the need to address societal beliefs and taboos surrounding the issue she said menstruation was a normal biological process and a key sign of reproductive health yet in many cultures it is treated as something negative shameful or dirty Based on the findings and recommendations of the study, Mrs. Margaret Okain said, behavior change communication materials in a form of basic package to help change the perception of people as far as menstrual hygiene management was concerned was developed. I wish to emphasize that as part of the campaign, MHM champions and ambassadors have been identified to reinforce MHM messages through advocacy with the various interpersonal communication channels with stakeholders. It is a hope, therefore, that our cherished stakeholders will own the MHM materials and support with reprinting to support with education on MHM. The Chief of Wash at UNICEF, Mr. David Duncan, pledged UNICEF's support to the government of Ghana and called for more cost-effective gender-friendly facilities to improve menstrual hygiene management in schools. Mr. Duncan urged stakeholders to build on efforts being made to move forward with effective collaboration. Just to encourage everybody um, to be part of this process, um, we're looking to get this, um, the MHM, mainstreamed into the education sector plan and it's critical for anything within the sector to be picked up and, and represented in that if we're going to go forward with it and we've been supporting government in, in doing that so 
on behalf of UNICEF, uh, we look forward to this workshop and ensuring that girls are supported on MHN. Dr. Edward Nambing, Lecturer Institute of African Studies, University of Ghana, said a study conducted in Zabzugu and North Day District revealed that in some communities, menstruating girls are relieved of their normal routines and may be isolated or confined. He said to worsen the situation, the lack of support in schools such as changing rooms, toilets, running water and supply of sanitary pads among others leads the girls to stay at home during menstruation. Dr. Nambing said the experiences of girls in these districts made it possible to understand the situation with regard to menstrual hygiene management issues. The girls said it in their, in, during the interviews that when it comes to those topics, the teachers glide over or skip it. So they don't really get anything about menstruation during science or social studies or moral education. So the challenge is, apart from the impartation of knowledge and the time that girls get to know about menstruation, also the behaviors and attitudes. Because the community usually has these taboos about, about menstruation, the approach to girls when they are menstruating leaves them in a kind of mood that doesn't let them stay in school. Because if the boys are teasing them, they are not going to stay in school. And to the final story, management of the Ghana Water Company Limited has introduced an electronic billing system to tackle challenges such as delays in billing, non-billing, non-reflection of bill payments, and difficulty in monitoring meter readers, among others. The electronic billing project, which was launched in Tema on May 24, 2016, after which the necessary preparatory work began, is expected to cover 80% of the total customers by the end of May 2017. The Ghana Water Company Limited is mandated to provide portable water supply to all urban communities in Ghana. The company operates 88 urban water supply systems throughout the country since its establishment in 1993, with an average production of about 192 million gallons per day. With a staff strength of 3,476, the Ghana Water Company Limited covers 77% of urban water supply, serving about 550,654 customers, of which 74% are metered and 26 unmetered. Over the years, the utility company has engaged its customers with a paper billing and paying system. The system, however, has been challenged with delays in billing, non-billing, non-reflection of bill payments, and difficulty in monitoring meter readers. With the introduction of technology, it is expected that the Ghana Water Company Limited will be able to do away with all the errors that comes along with the paper billing and payment system. Speaking to Watch TV News, the communications manager Mr. Stanley Marty says the e-billing system will reduce time between customer meter reading and customer billing, link customer billing to customer location, allow bill payment anywhere, and enable online service connection application for new customers. The e-billing is an electronic um, form of billing our customers. Hitherto, our customers received paper bills. So your meter is read, the details taken to the office imprinted into our system, and then um, it's calculated, worked out, printed, and sent it to you after a month or two, depending on where you live, and depending on other factors. Now the electronic billing will do the same, but this time um, it's going to be instant. So the meter reader is expected to, to, to come to the uh, customer's um, premises, use an Android device in reading the meter. So he comes, he looks at the meter, he picks the GPS location of the meter. 
and that is when the customer details will pop out in his system now the customer details has been taken already in some some four regions and that's the Western Central, Greater Accra, and Ashanti regions. So the meter reader comes to your home, pick the GPS location, the data pops out, then he inputs um, the readings onto his device. He also uses the device to take a picture of the readings on the meter. Okay, and sends it into the clouds, the calculation is made and sent to the customer on his mobile phone instantly. So all this process should take less than a minute and the information on your current paper bill is same as the information that you're going to receive electronically as a text message on your phone. Now this brings me to the end of the Watch News, but then a quick look at the headlines. Who's in Cape Coast Metropolis mark World Toilet Day? Ghana Education Service and UNICEF launch menstrual hygiene management communication materials. And Ghana Water Company introduces electronic billing. For more news, please log on to our Facebook and YouTube pages at Watch TV channel. Thanks for watching.